What's up, party people? My name is Frankie Aviles, and this is Think Like the Enemy. Thank you so much for being here with me this evening, this morning, wherever you're getting a chance to actually look at this video. If you are with us at the moment on the go, you're listening to either Podbean, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, thank you for seeing us and actually hearing us in your commute. Or whatever you're doing right now, you know, I hope that you don't cut your finger because you're about to hear some things that are completely shocking. I'm assuming that you are cutting things at your job. I don't know exactly what you're doing, but I hope that whatever you're doing, you're doing it safely. Let's let's keep that, you know, going. Today, we have the actual story of the president of the United States going to the actual border or somewhat of the border. Because he actually went to Brownsville. He went to a CBP facility that is, I believe he's training, uh, like a training ground or something like that. And Mr. Joe Biden was actually asked about the actual border crisis and the effects that it has had in our society so far. And the particular question was about Lake and Riley. For those of you who don't know who Lake and Riley was, she was an actual 22-year-old nursing student that got killed this past week by an illegal immigrant that came to the United States through the southern border in actual Georgia. It is extremely sad that this lady died, and I am very sorry for your loss. Because there's no instance that anybody should be killed in this country. We should all be able to live and prosper and just be as courteous and as patient with or patient with each other. And the fact that this lady just got her life taken away from her, it is so sad. And to her family, I am very sorry for your loss. The president of the United States, when asked the question, he diverted the actual questioning to what it is, climate change. Because climate change is more important than the actual border crisis issue that we have in America and the actual fact that Ms. Lake and Riley died. That's what the president of the United States just told us. More so, what the president of the United States decided to tell the people abroad that our, our enemies is that he doesn't know what the hell is going on with his actual border. And this is a free for all for anybody to come in and try to mess with us in any possible way. Anything that happens around the globe will be unchecked because he doesn't even know that an actual American citizen died at the hands of an illegal immigrant because of the policies that this man has not enforced. That's basically what he just told this family. That's basically what he told everybody around the world. This shouldn't be a shock to you. If you have been looking at anything that is happening around the globe, it shouldn't be a shock to you. It shouldn't be a shock to you because we have seen the things that Mr. Joe Biden has gone through. He has fallen repeatedly. He has basically made a fool of himself and of the presidency of the United States. The one thing that somebody caught in this particular instance was quite an impressive video about the actual teleprompter that Mr. Biden gets put and how big it is. And I thought it was interesting because I've never seen such a big teleprompter. I already have it, man. Like, not that close. I'm going to play this video for y'all. Check it out. It's going to come back around. It's only about six seconds. Super huge, super big. Everybody behind the media is basically just having a different angle of the actual situation and what's happening. Because Mr. Biden needed to see his teleprompter. Word by word. He recited the whole thing. Word by freaking word. Not one piece of compassion for Lake and Riley's family. Not one piece. 
More so, we have that today. Scanner actually came out with a report saying that democracy is in decline. Experts warn. You know, we love the experts. And that the results of the 2024 election will shape the international environment for years to come. I'm going to show you the actual article real quick. Duh. That's basically what they what we need to tell them. Really? You think that the actual issues of our election are not going to matter like abroad? I'm sorry to tell you, but they are. They are going to matter. And I'm going to tell you why they're going to matter. If we do not get a president that actually cares about the international and global relations, the stands that we have as the American people and the actual American apparatus abroad, we are screwed. Plain and simple. I'll tell you why. If we do not start upholding the actual values, the actual notion that America is still a superpower and that America in some shape, way or form has the ability to continue to control the narrative globally as a super nation, we are no more. We are giving enough ammunition to Russia, to China, to Iran, to Syria, to Lebanon, the Yemen. Enough ammunition that we can be at a very, I would say, particular situation and a particular notion to peril as a nation. All the chess pieces are on the board. All the moves have been made. The compromise of the American people has already been done. There is no more. There's nowhere to go. We can barely afford housing. We can barely afford living, renting, owning in America today. In the same way that everybody else in the globe is doing it. But yet again, they're more worried about the so-called democracy being at a peril when there is there or there are bigger fish to fry. Let's read this article a little bit. During a recent episode of Harvard Thinking, scholars argue that the U.S. democracy is facing growing challenges as political polarization continues to worsen and the Americans' faith in core institutions remained on a on great slide. Daniel Allen, director of Allen Lab for Demo Democracy, <clears throat> excuse me, renovation at Harvard Kennedy School, Schools Ash Center for Democratic Governance and Innovation, said there are several indicators that U.S. democracy is fragile right now. Let me tell you something before we keep going. American democracy has always been fragile. I believe it was in the words of Thomas Jefferson. I believe so. We give you democracy if you can keep it. So they knew that it was fragile. We know it's fragile. Everybody knows it's fragile. Everybody around the world knows it's fragile. But for some shape or form, we have been able to continue growing and moving and pushing forward. But yet again, here we are. And he goes to say, for me, one of the most important ones is the disconnection of the younger people to our democracy. Younger people are much less likely to express a higher degree of commitment to democracy than older people. She told the other panelists. There are indicators around general trust in our political institutions where there's been massive decline, huge increases in polarization. And of course, we are watching before our eyes month to month significant governance dysfunctions play out in Congress, she added. There are a lot of indicators to suggest that our democracy is not as healthiest point or at its healthiest point a democracy can be. 
She's right 100%. She's right 100% because our democracy is not at a point that is healthy. Our democracy is at a point that it needs a leader that actually leads, not a leader that it doesn't know where he's literally standing. Because that's what we're seeing. We're seeing a leader that doesn't know exactly what is going on in his life. Somebody that has the possibility of dementia. Somebody that shouldn't be leading anything other than his happy ass down the hallway to get to the bathroom and enjoy his retirement and his years of service to this nation. Democrat or not, it doesn't matter to me. He served this nation already. This to me is just abuse. This is abuse. Why would you have an 82 year old sitting at the highest office in this nation? Why? Why do we have a Mitch McConnell in the Republican side? Why do we have them? We don't need them. How are we going to get the younger people to be involved in the democratic process and in democracy if we don't give them the opportunity to exercise the same? Explain that to me. You know why? Because they want power. They want to continue to hold the cards. They want to continue to be the all-seeing eye. They want to hold the money. They want to hold the power. At the end of the day, that's what it comes to. And we have no way of saying or understanding what the next generation is going to bring or when are they actually going to bring a stance into this mix that is beneficial for each and every one of those or of us out there that wants to do this. We need to continue to have these conversations. We need to continue to push the envelope. We need to continue to push back on the status quo because a status quo does not work. This little dog and pony dance that they're doing in every single shape or form that they want to, it's not working. I'm sorry to tell you, but it is just not working. More so, there's an actual trend that happened today, and I spoke about it in the daily CPR. And if you haven't seen it, it's basically we're covering everything here, but in a very condensed way and more on a comedic side. Because this to me is just theater, comedy. And just a freaking circus. That's what it is to me. That's what the American political spectrum and the political theater has come down to me. This is a freaking circus and we're just enjoying the freaking ride. I'm not. I'm sure as hell not because I don't believe in this, in this little ride that we're taking, apparently. More so. We see that. The trend and the pattern right now that happened on Google midday, people searching in their freaking lunch break is centrism. And centrism is a very interesting notion because it is basically you're not either far left or far right. You're right in the middle and you're very accepting, very understanding, meaning no debate, no pushback, no actual benefit to the actual republic because we are a republic i don't disagree that sometimes you have to take a very centrist point of view to get your point across with the people that you're trying to get your point across why because you need to compromise that is how actual politics and how actual democracy works you need to compromise if you have a neighbor and you have an issue with a neighbor you should both compromise Neighbor should stop doing the things that he's doing, and you should be standing in your ground because you are in your home, and that is that. But this centrist push is not something that you go like, okay, Frankie, centrism, that sounds great, man. Everybody should get along. Let's all hold hands, sing kumbaya, and say all the actual things that we want, right? I want to read something to you real quick. I'm going to switch it so you can see it in your screen. If you're not seeing it in your screen, you're going to get the benefit of actually getting it read to you. Centrism. Let me switch back, actually. Desktop view. Let's cut to the other scene. Centrism has a specific meaning within the Marxist movement. It refers to a position between revolution and reformism. This to me is basically the way that every single socialist party gets started 
And our globe is basically what we're seeing with people looking for centrism. And just for you to know, when we look at the actual metrics, it was about 19 states in the nation were looking at it. I'm not saying that people cannot look at it. I'm saying that it, that's great if they want to actually compromise. Good for you. Compromise away, my friend. I have no problem with this. My issue is with how quickly centrism can turn into socialism. Socialism into anarchy. Anarchy into an actual revolution. A revolution into the destruction of our republic. We're just a few steps away from possibly having these things that I just spoke about here in America. It is the truth. We need to safeguard what America stands for. We need to safeguard the actual ideas that made this country what it is today. Is it a little crazy right now? Good God almighty, it sure is. Can it be better? It can always be better. It can always, always, always be better, no matter what. We can make it better. And we need to understand that every single enemy that we have around the globe is thinking how they can possibly exploit exactly what is happening in America. And unfortunately, out of the only two candidates that we have in the race so far, even if Nikki Haley is there, is she really there? Come on now. Not really. So. Out of the two candidates, the only candidate that can do something is Mr. Donald Trump. Why? Why do I think this? I'm going to show you why. President Biden went to Brownsville. President Trump today went to Eagle Pass. I'm going to play you a clip. For those of you that are not watching, you can listen to his actual expressions. Uh, the uh, reports have come out and we've been covering them and everybody's been. And I spoke to the parents of an incredible young lady and you, you saw her the other day. You saw what happened the other day in Georgia. And the parents are devastated. They're incredible people. But this is a Joe Biden invasion. This is a Biden invasion over the past three years. I call him Crooked Joe because he's crooked. He's a terrible president, the worst president our country's ever had, uh, and probably the most incompetent president we've ever had. I have to but agree with him. But uh, it's allowing thousands and thousands of people to come in from China, Iran, Yemen, the Congo, Syria, and a lot of other nations, many nations are not very friendly to us. He's transported the entire columns of uh, fighting aged men, and they're all at a certain age. And you look at them and say, they, they look like warriors to me. Something's going on that's bad. Now the United States is being overrun by the Biden migrant crime. It's a new form of uh, vicious violation to our country. It's migrant crime. We call it Biden migrant crime, but that's a little bit long. So we'll just leave it. But every time you hear the term migrant crime, you know where that comes from. Allowing thousands and thousands and actually millions and millions of people to come. Could be 15 million, could be 18 million by the time he uh, gets out of office because. By the time he gets out of office, the protections are there. I have talked about them before and I'll talk to them again. 10 million came in. The projection is to be 20. Possibly by the time that he leaves office. And that's where we are. Did you hear the key words in this man's actual speech? The first thing he opened about was with the issue that is impacting the nation. The issue that is impacting the nation is the fact that a very young lady, unfortunately, died at the hands of an immigrant that happened to have crossed this border in the south of our nation illegally. That's it. That's the issue. He went right for the jugular, just exactly as he should have. Unfortunately, nobody cares. Nobody cares because 
In the left, climate change takes over the life of a human being. Even if they're saying that they want to protect the lives of everybody else in the country with their climate push. Yet again, it means nothing to them. Sad. It's just sad. Think of what the perception will be for somebody looking at these issues, which they are actively looking at them abroad. You have the guy that is being prosecuted for everything that is doing, even breathing the wrong way. Donald J. Trump. 400 and some odd million has to be paid, blah, 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 to New York. Tomorrow he will be in Florida. Unfortunately, I will not be able to attend. On an actual court case in Fort Pierce for the classified documents. I would have loved to have listened to what he had to say to the media and actually get a better angle of that particular news conference. But he will be in Fort Pierce tomorrow. Think of what the enemy is paying attention to right now. The man is being prosecuted in every shape or form, but yet again, we are a democracy, or so we say. While the actual president of the United States is peddling to the globalist idea, I'm not saying that globalism, it is inherent wrong 100%. I'm saying that today was not the day to talk about the climate crisis. Today was not the day to actually peddle the idea that the globe needs to be secure and Ukraine and all this bullshit, because it is not. Today, what needed to happen was a heart to heart with the American people to tell them that you actually care about their issues and their lives. That you care about, it's Lake and Riley. That you care about the struggles happening 1000% to everybody in this country that is being affected by illegal immigration. Today was a day to actually talk about the block that happened for the actual Texas law letting police arrest illegal immigrants and the border and how this federal judge might have a very wrong opinion of what the law actually is in our country. That, that would have been a very nice topic to talk about, but yet again, he did not. He did not. A federal judge said Texas may not exercise immigration authority without permission from the federal government. And this is a clip from Fox News. We're going to play about 30 seconds from it. We're running short on time. Let's see if it buffers properly. Fox is back on Fox Nation, the only place to watch new episodes. Sorry, we're getting a little, a little cops thing. My apologies. Let's play right now. Boom, there we go. And former President Trump are heading for the border, dueling visits, but they'll be in you know, hundreds of miles apart. Even as former DHS secretary during the Obama years, Jay Johnson admits the border crisis only getting worse. 250,000 apprehensions in one month. My second year in office, we had 315,000 apprehensions in all of the year. 2015, mm. just for some perspective here. I understand the numbers have dropped a bit of late, but longer term, big picture, this is a, a hemispheric shift right. northward. It's a crisis on multiple levels in multiple places. It is a crisis, and that's why Lawrence is... It absolutely is a crisis. It is a crisis that has been going around in the United States for many, many years. And we get it. It is time to fix it. That's it. That's all we need to know. Maybe people are searching for centrism just because they're tired of the same BS. Maybe today is a day that we actually need to stop pedaling to the left and the right. Maybe have the conversation and the heart to heart and say, you know what, guys, this might be the day.
We need to shut this shit down. Maybe this is the day where we actually think like an enemy and we say, imagine what everybody else is thinking of us right now as the United States of America abroad. That we cannot even hold our borders. And yet again, we want to play and act like the police force for the whole entire world. Today we have that Vladimir, Vladimir Putin actually moved some of his nuclear warheads to the border with Ukraine. Is it maybe because he's trying to protect his border? Is it maybe because he's actually trying to show the West that he is not afraid of Ukraine going into NATO and the actions that he will take automatically as soon as it actually becomes a reality? That is what this presidency has pushed in the global spectrum. And in the efforts to continue to think like the enemy, I want you to continue the conversation on X at Frankie USN 1987. Comment below, like, follow and share this actual content. If you're listening to me on Podbeam, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, XM, Thank you for listening. If you're watching, thank you for watching. I appreciate you. If you're interested in of seeing how I get to the conclusions that I do, you can look at my book right back here. And in my actual account on X, there's a link. It's called Beyond the Border, Envisionings, Envisioning the Adversary's Tactics. It's a book about what politicals, political strategists actually do. And in the way that they get to pushing the narrative to the benefit of the party and not of the people of America. I thank you sincerely for being here. I appreciate you. Thank you. And this has been Think Like the Enemy. And I am your host, Frankie Aviles. See you on the next one.